We're learning to be tool safe. Watch this video to find out the safety guidelines for this equipment. Hot wire cutters work by heating a thin wire with a low voltage power supply, thus enabling expanded polystyrene or styrofoam to be sliced and sculpted very easily. You can buy handheld and tabletop versions. Tabletop versions are usually powered by an AC wall socket supply, while handheld versions are sometimes AC powered and sometimes DC powered by batteries. The cutting of expanded polystyrene by means of a wire heated to about 300 to 400 degrees Celsius is hazardous for a couple reasons. Fumes are emitted that can be toxic, and touching the wire can seriously burn exposed skin. Therefore, we have to take precautions. You should know there are a few types of hot wire cutters available. They are the vertical wire table, sculpture tool, and engraving tool. These tools are used to produce prototypes and models such as airplane wings and fuselage, signage, molds, and architectural models that can be used with the vacuum forming process. The important points to notice about hot wire cutters are that the wire is heated using a low voltage. Most hot wire cutters use special nichrome, nickel chrome wire, just as in a toaster. The same safety rules apply for heat and fumes. Hot wire cutters cut by melting their way through the foam. They are intended for use with polystyrene foam and don't work with upholstery type sponge foam polyurethane foam, hard plastic, or most other things that you might consider trying. These can give off toxic fumes. Our foam cutters are designed to cut polystyrene foam only. Basically, you can be creative, but not that creative with materials. If you are unsure you have the correct type of material to use, check with your instructor first. Before using a hot wire cutter, there are several things you need to consider. First. Inspect the hot wire cutter for damage to the casing or wire. Ensure the on-off switch, if equipped, is functioning properly and inspect the electrical cord and plug for fraying or other damage. If the hot wire cutter fails your inspection, inform your teacher and remove it from use until repaired properly. Be sure there is no melted foam on the wire or handle. It must be cleaned before beginning a cut. See your teacher for instructions. Choose a work area near a power outlet so that you don't need an extension cord. Be sure the work area is clean, dry, and clear of any tripping hazards. Make sure you plug and unplug holding the plug itself, not the wire. Personal protection is extremely important in all shop activities. First, always wear safety goggles or glasses to protect against eye injuries. Tie back long hair and remove any jewelry. Make sure you don't have loose clothing that can catch on the wire. Many modern fabrics burn easily and sticking to skin can cause a bad burn. Depending on your teacher and the equipment, you may also be required to wear heat-safe gloves. Plan to only cut in well-ventilated areas. Do not breathe the toxic smoke off the foam cutter. Use a fan to bring a supply of fresh air around the cutter and or an exhaust fan to blow the toxic smoke away. The use of a dust mask is recommended to keep small bits of foam from your lungs as you work. If your eyes sting or you feel uncomfortable breathing, stop your cutting and let your teacher know immediately. Some students may be super sensitive or allergic to the smell. At this point, your hot wire cutter has passed inspection, your work area is clean and clear, and you are wearing the appropriate personal protection equipment, or PPE. To begin, secure the material you will be using. You should have cut the piece to the rough dimension size and have outlined the shape with a non-toxic marker. Turn on the foam cutter. Be forewarned again. Do not touch the cutting wire. It is very hot. Warn others in the area to stay clear. You don't want someone to bump into you or the tool. Plan your cut and practice your motions before cutting to make sure it's not awkward to hold. Be sure the foam cutter is always at 90 degrees to you and the workpiece and cut parallel to your body. Push the foam into the hot wire until the wire contacts the outline. It is important to move at an even pace. Do not go too quickly and bend the hot wire or too slowly and burn the styrofoam. It'll take some practice. If your wire breaks, do not touch it until the power supply is off and unplugged from the wall. Because both ends of the wire will still have power, it will be hot. While operating the foam cutter, never put your hand between the foam and the wire element. Be aware of the location of the wire at all times. Keep yourself away from the area and direction of travel. Do not leave the machine unattended while it is in use. 
Make sure everyone in the area knows it is on or it is still hot. Never touch the wire when in use or cooling down. It may still be burning hot even if it's not glowing red. Continue until all pieces are cut out. If pieces of foam remain on the wire after a cut, use a piece of wood to remove it before cutting the next piece. When you are finished, unplug the foam cutter. Place it on a stand to keep the hot wire away from any surface or hold the cutter away from table surfaces until it is cool enough to lay down. Keep the wire away from all surfaces and flammable materials until it is room temperature. Once you are done your cuts, you can smooth the edges of the foam with medium grit abrasive paper. Inside curves may be sanded on a spindle sander. Be patient and go slow. Some power sanders tend to melt the styrofoam rather than smooth it. Styrofoam is notorious for sticking to everything as it holds static energy. Use a vacuum and brush to remove all foam debris. Clean and remove any debris or scrap left on the equipment or general area. So let's do our tool safe review. The hot wire cutter uses a red hot wire that can severely burn you. Keep yourself away from it at all times. Plan your moves around the machine or handling the tool. Ensure you have a safe standing zone. Make sure the wire is adjusted properly and the machine and power are all working correctly. Avoid breathing fumes. Use only in proper ventilation. Clean up all foam pieces and make sure your wire is unbroken and clean when finished. And if you're not sure about anything for safety, ask your teacher for more direction. And be tool safe.